The Seven Star Terror Raid event for Typhlosion is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details in today's video, as well as the best Pokemon to solo this with in your games. So if you haven't guessed already, I am in a bit of a different location this weekend for EUIC for the Pokemon Championship. So in a hotel room trying to record this video. But we're going to do the best we can to get you all the information for this event. Now, as always, if we hop over to our trusty source at Cerebi, we can see the event itself is running from April of the 14th until the 16th. That is the first phase of this event. It will be returning next weekend on the 21st and running through to the 23rd. Typhlosion is going to be level 100. It does have its hidden ability of flash fire, so don't bring any fire type attacks to this raid. Its moves that it is going to be using are Eruption, Shadow Ball, Play Rough, Earthquake, and then additional move of Sunny Day. So no fighting type coverage on here, which is really good for some of the Pokemon that we can pick going into this raid. Obviously, it's going to have its mightiest mark as well, and it is only catchable once per save file. And once you beat the Typhlosion, you will get an array of good item drops like usual, a mix of large and XL candies. You're going to get Ghost, Cherry Shards, which are really useful, Calciums. You're going to get the TM Shadow Ball and you have a good chance to get an ability patch as well as some other high cost items. But like I say, the event itself is running over this weekend. And once you have the event in your game, if you don't go online after the 16th, then you will be able to still access this event in your game to farm these terror raids over and over and over again, just to get the item drops after you've caught the Typhlosion. So to access this event in your game, all you need to do is come onto your Poker Portal and then once you're in this screen, connect to the internet and then come down to your Mystery Gifts. And once you're in your Mystery Gifts, just check Poker Portal News and it'll give you the update for all of the Terror Raid events in your game. And once you've done the update, you'll be able to come onto your map and you'll be able to kind of locate the Terror Raid den and it will look exactly like this. It'll look like a six star Terror Raid, but it will have the ghost terror typing tied to it. So once you've done that, you want to just head over to where it is and then you can see that the Typhlosion should be lying waiting for us here. Now the builds that we're going to go over in today's video for soloing this, I think there are three that are very good. Obviously there is Annihilate, a lot of people are using this and to good effect. The Annihilate itself is going to want the Shell Bell item, the Ghost Terror typing as well. And, and pretty much all you're going to need on the moveset is going to be Rage Fist. That's the only option that you're going to really need going into this raid. You don't need to worry about Screech, Drain Punch or Bulk Up. As long as you've got that Rage Fist, you'll be fine. EV spread of 252 attack and then 252 special defense. It'll just allow you to take those eruptions a little easier with an eye lift. Defiant is the ability on there, but it doesn't really matter too much because you're not going to get any drops other than from the player rough, which could come in handy with a Defiant there. The next one up is going to be Fluttermane as well. So Fluttermane, we covered in our preview article here, has the Shell Bell item, going to be able to take these big attacks from Typhlosion pretty well with its Sky High Special Defensive stat. Uh, it has the Ghost Terror typing, of course. EV spread of 252 HP, 252 Special Attack with a Modest Nature. We've got the Protosynthesis ability there. And moveset, we're going to be going for Calm Mind, Fake Tears, Shadow Ball, and Draining Kiss. Drain Draining Kiss is a bit of a filler move. Um, and the premise of this set is you want to want to try and get two to three fake tears off before the shield goes up. You're more than likely going to be able to get two off. Then you're going to want to calm mind a couple of times and then just start spamming Shadow Ball with the Flutter main. And then it will be able to clean up pretty easily. The other option, of course, is going to be our Ferrigarath here. Now, Ferrigarath is a great option. I like it personally. It is going to have that Psychic Terror typing. It is going to have the held item of the Shell Bell. And the EV spread that you're going to want on Ferrigarath is going to be two 252 HP, 252 special defense just to maximize your ability to survive those big eruptions from Typhlosion initially when you go into the raid. The moveset is going to be Skill Swap, Nasty Plot, Amnesia, and Stored Power. The ability can be anything. We've got Sap Zipper on here. It can be anything on the Ferrograph because we're going to be swapping that away initially when we go into the Typhlosion raid. So once you've got your Pokemon built, as always, the Pokemon will be down in the description if you wanted to get a closer look at them. You can hop in and we can go after this Typhlosion. And also, as well, if you are around this weekend, uh, check out the VG, the TCG, Pokemon Go, and Pokemon Unite streams that will be running the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend in London for the EUIC. I'll be buying the desk for VG, so it'll be really exciting if you do want to check them out. They're all on the Pokemon YouTube channel, and um, it'll be a really exciting event. So when you come into the raid here, first off, we're not going to have a turn zero with that we normally see from these seven-star raids, so you're going to be able to get an attack off 
straight away and just kind of start with the skill swap because that will steal the flash fire from the typhlosion. You're always going to take this initial eruption here. Um, and it is preferable when you're doing this with Farigarath to have an Intimidate user on your team. It will make the setup a lot easier. Now, the second turn, it is important to go for a heal chair this stage because you don't want to get knocked out after you've stole that ability. And Typhlosion will nullify all abilities on turn like the end of turn two, which we'll see in a minute. So you want to make sure that you've got enough health so after the sunny day setup and your abilities nullify that you're going to be able to take that eruption in. It's the only eruption that you're going to be taking after this point from the Typhlosion. So you can see here we don't get a massive amount of health back, but we should be okay here as we see an earthquake come out. Like I said, the Intimidates do help, and that burn definitely helps as well. And there we go. Here is a turn, nullified all stat changes and abilities, and it will fire off an eruption before we can do anything. So this is the only time where our ability is negated. Now our ability is back intact. You probably want to go for a second heal chair at this stage, just to make sure that you're in a healthier position. Hopefully you get a lot more health back than we got before, uh, but it is kind of potluck with these heal chairs, but we do get a lot of health back. So this makes it a lot easier. Sometimes you're not going to get as much health back, but like I say, with an Intimidate user next to you, you're going to be in a much better position um, to be able to kind of set up. Now all we want to do is get our three Amnesias up and then three Nasty Plots up, and then we can start going for those stored powers with Farigraph, which is exactly what we kind of plan to do initially. But with that Flash Fire ability, we're in a good position where we don't need to worry anymore about those eruptions. And we're only worrying about the earthquakes, uh, the play roughs, and the shadow balls at the minute aren't even a thing to worry about either because of our normal typing. So it is pretty easy, uh, straightforward once you've got to this point. It's just that initial setup that you need to make sure that you kind of survive that second eruption after you uh, get your your ability nullified, which is the big thing. And then after your three nasty plots, you just want to go for those three amnesias as well, just to kind of max out all of your stats, because I think at that point after that, your stop powers are going to be doing a good chunk of damage, and you'll soon catch up with the timer as well. You can see it is kind of ticking away at the minute, but it is easy enough to catch up once you've broke that shield. And you can see that the impact that the Intimidate user is having on uh, Typhlosion's attacks, they're doing nothing once you're in that healthy position with Fergarath. And of course, the Oblivia as well with its uh, its grassy terrain is definitely helping us out a bunch with that recovery as well. So. Um, try when you come into the raid if you haven't got an intimidator next to you you can always just run and then come back into it and hopefully have something like a taurus something like star raptor or arcanine that can help you out so now we are all set up you can see our stats here um we can have a look at the type version it is minus four because it keeps knocking the taurus out but we are now in a good position to just start firing up these stored powers now initially the stored powers aren't going to be doing that much damage behind the shield but we only need to get to the point where we can uh, terrestrialize and then we'll be doing absolutely ridiculous damage to this Typhlosion. Right, now this next turn is where we can terrestrialize. We're in a good healthy position as well. We're all set up. We've got plus six across the board in our attack, uh, special attack and special defense. So we're in a really nice place. So even if Typhlosion decides to fire off Shadow Balls now, we got plus six special defense. So we're not really gonna be worried about this too much at all. Um, you can see, Fortunately, the terrestrialization animation doesn't work very well there, but as we know, the raids can be glitchy, but there, what we want to do is get our stored power off and we'll be able to see how much damage we'll be able to do to this Typhlosion now. We'll break the shield and we should do a really significant chunk to the Typhlosion, making it easy to knock out um, after the next sword power, which after the shield's down is kind of a guarantee. So it's a pretty quick way to do it. I think a nice strategy. Like I say, it is just that initial setup, just making sure that Fergraph doesn't get knocked out when your stats are nullified at the beginning of the battle. Because after that, um, you, you're pretty safe and dry, especially if you've got an Intimidate user next to you. And there's the final stored power. And you can see it is as easy as that. And we caught up at that time and no problem at all. So Fergraph, a really good pick. It was something that we covered in our preview article. Uh, we tweaked the EVs slightly and uh, we are able to catch our Typhlosion. And there we go. So there's our Typhlosion in a nice heavy ball. And you can see the rewards there that we do get. We get an ability patch as well, which is really nice. So some really good item drops and the Typhlosion is as easy as that to do. Like I say, you can use the Annihilate, you can use the Fluttermane. All the Fergraph is a really kind of unique, nice method to use that we covered in our preview article earlier in the week. So it's really nice to see it kind of working. And once you complete the raid, obviously you can only have one save 
uh, you can only catch Type Dodge in one specific file, but if you want to battle it again, you can then come to your map and all you need to do is then come into your system settings. You want to come down to system, then into date and time. You make sure that your synchronized clock is off via the internet. Click into date and time itself and just click through all of these options. Don't change anything. Hit that OK then come back into your home menu, uh, back into the game, and you'll see everything in your map will change. All your terror raid dens will respawn. So you'll be able to just then locate the ghost terror raid again, and uh, you'll be able to just kind of repeat this process, being the type of and getting those good item drops over and over again. And as you can see, there is ours right there. So friends, that is everything for today's video. I know it's a bit weird being in the hotel room, but I did want to put this up and uh, I did want to cover it. I tried to do it when the event got, went live last night, but unfortunately my internet wasn't allowing me to get on to get the event with my Switch. It has worked this morning, hence why we're doing it now, which is good timing because I've got the event happening later this morning. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please drop a like, do subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and let me know what your thoughts are on the bills that we featured in today's video or what Pokemon you've been taking into these seven star terror raid events. I hope you have a lot of fun with it and thank you so much as always for tuning in and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.